Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. Today's topic will be castor beans. Now, the specimen you see in front of you is a variety called Impala, which gets somewhere between three to four feet high. Over here, you have an exemplary specimen of Zanzibar. This specimen can get up to ten feet tall, and as you can see, it's off to a really good start. Now, the scientific name of castor bean is Ricinus communis. Communis obviously means something akin to community, meaning that it's a common plant, and in its original distribution it is. Ricinus comes from a similar Greek word meaning tick, which refers to the shape of the seed, which looks like a... Really? What are we, in Wild Kingdom here? What was... Okay, we're rolling with this. <clears throat> um, as I was going to say, because the seed looks somewhat like a tick, swollen with blood, which... D don't Google it, you might puke. It's gross. It's, it's a kind of gross I don't like to talk about. Now, if we go over here... Away from... Cat battle... Look at the size of that leaf. That is easily the diameter of a basketball. And this is the first specimen plant that was put in the ground. Oh lord, look at that stem. Thick! Hopefully this one will get to at least six feet tall, though I would love a full ten, so just for the photograph opportunities. In the, the fall tour, and I have a couple tours through my garden every year, um shows the accumulation of the work of the year, and this one hopefully will be one heck of a demonstrator. Now, castor bean has been in use by human beings for quite some time. In fact, that's probably where the communist name comes from. We know for a fact that ancient Egyptians used the castor seed oil as lamp oil. The actual distribution is quite wide too, as it is native to the southeastern Mediterranean basin, eastern Africa, and India, and from there has gotten distribution worldwide. In certain parts of Greece, these trees are per these. Let me correct that. These plants, while they we consider them annuals here because they cannot tolerate frost, are full-blown street trees there in certain parts of Greece, which is amazing. You go on Wikipedia, you'll see a street lined with castor bean trees, which goes back to the old rule. Just because it's a perennial somewhere doesn't mean it's necessarily perennial where you are. Now, what makes these plants great is that if you successfully grow one, you will get a fair amount of seed from it and you can just grow it again the next year. A lot of folks at the market seem ambivalent about this plant because it is the source of the highly toxic poison ricin. Ricin has a notable use in the Cold War as a means of the Soviet Union getting rid of certain def a certain defector. If you look up the whole ricin incident involving the Cold War, you'll be amazed. Now beyond that, I mean, the seeds aren't exactly palatable. This isn't a true bean. The seeds have a very hard shell protecting the actual uh, seedling parts inside. All parts of the plant are, taste-wise, pretty bitter, so you wouldn't want to eat it anyway. There is also the fact that castor beans are ultimately in the Euphorbiaceae family. That means they're related to poinsettias, which explains a little about them. The sap can be an irritant and can cause rashes and other things. However, some of the best things in the garden are poisonous. A lot of our common garden flowers are alarmingly poisonous. You know, foxgloves, larkspurs. So this is just one of many, and this is a tropical angle on the whole thing. In Fayetteville, North Carolina, or Cumberland County, that's Zone 8A, it is possible that the seed drop, if covered by a mulch, may come back the next year. I wouldn't count on this. However, the seed preserves really well and has a pretty good germination rate. You'd have to really screw it up to, to, to lower it beyond 80%. Overall, though, this plant is usually a centerpiece tropical to add height and, you know, eye-catching appeal to a garden. 
And I believe that's all we have about the castor bean for today. Stay tuned for our next episode, which will cover Vietnamese coriander, a hot season substitute for our standard coriander flavor. Keep them grown, folks.